Welcome back to more useful fantasy content on this channel. This will be the best limitless team for match day two. I'd also encourage you to check out my how to play guide for this fantasy format and also the chip strategy, which is applicable for the entire tournament. On screen, you can see the lead code, which is CCAFXB. There is also an auto join link in the description. The same goes for my Twitter and Instagram, the Discord server, and Patreon. Also, the channel memberships by clicking the join button on YouTube so you can get early access to my content. The same will, of course, apply to patrons. And check out my Spotify. Give a five star review if you enjoy my content. Without further ado, let's jump straight into it. During the league phase, we have a 100 million budget, but with the limitless, that isn't really applicable or relevant as you get unlimited budget for a specific match day and it will work like a free hit from FPL. So, unlike the wild card, which enforces permanent changes, the Limitless is designed for one match day only, and my recommendation is to use it between match days two to seven. Check out my chip strategy guide to see the reasons why, and the same goes for the best time to use the wildcard chip. Let's start with the goalkeepers and work our way up through the field. The first player in this Limitless team will be Thibaut Courtois, who has plenty of Champions League experience over the years, including being man of the match in a Champions League final against Liverpool, also very solid performance against Borussia Dortmund last season, despite not playing that many games due to injury. But facing Lille away, I think there's a decent chance of a Real Madrid clean sheet. You could argue there are other goalkeepers with a better chance like Edison, and the same goes for Alisson, who would be probably my favourite goalkeeper that doesn't make it for match day two facing Bologna at home. But I'll talk about the defensive line and go for a balance. There won't be any defensive double-ups, but there are certain teams that certainly are capable of keeping that clean sheet and going for a double or triple up defensively could certainly work out. I wouldn't do that with Real Madrid. I think one's enough and Courtois is the best way of covering Los Merengues. But you've also got Rudiger in central defence. But the next goalkeeper is Jan Sommer, who only has 5% ownership and faces Sverna Svesida at home. And Inter Milan have been one of the best teams in Europe for the last couple of seasons, reaching a Champions League final, and their defence is absolutely rock solid. They went to the Etihad and actually kept Man City out in a nil-nil draw. In terms of XG and chances conceded, they probably should have leaked a few goals, but they've got some top defenders, also one of the best managers in world football in Inzaghi, and Sommer is a very solid and dependable goalkeeper. So going for Courtois and Sommer is going to be one of the best goalkeeper pairings for the Limitless. Bayer Leverkusen are the most solid team defensively, but their wing-backs Frimpong and Grimaldo offer so much attacking potential, and both of them got 12 points in match day one, so you could arguably go for both of them at the same time, or the Dutchman instead of the Spaniard, but I'm going for Grimaldo because he's been in better form across all competitions so far this season, but in match day one they were both absolutely fantastic, Grimaldo with the goal, and Frimpong with two use your fantasy assists on top of the clean sheet a very impressive performance away from home against Feyenoord and now it's going to be AC Milan up next who have been terrible so far this season but they did beat Inter Milan over the weekend so that could be a very big result for them and maybe they'll push on from this because they've really struggled for form so far but I'm going to go for a Borussia Dortmund centre-back here who can also play on the left-hand side and so far in this campaign that's where he's been playing on the left-hand side and that's going to be Schlotterbeck who has so much ball recovery potential but based on match day one I think Emre Chan is another good shout I wasn't really too fond of him in the deadline stream because his minutes have been very inconsistent in this new campaign but he actually got a massive return in match day one so you can go for him instead you've also got so many options for the Borussia Dortmund defense I still like Anton if he can get a start but that's not so secure I just play it safe and go for Schlotterbeck but you could even go for a double up in Bayer Leverkusen defensively or one of the other teams I've covered Inter Milan would be another one with a Serbi who's only 4.5 million by the way not to mention their wing backs such as Dumfries for example you've also got Renato Augusto and you've got plenty of central defenders there who can do a great job like Bastoni, uh, one of the best defenders in world football, in my opinion. But next up, I'm going for a right back who can play in central midfield. He's had a great start to the Premier League season, and that's Trent Alexander-Arnold. He is still my favourite way of covering Liverpool defensively. But with ball recoveries being such a massive factor in this game, I think a Virgil van Dijk or Canate could still be top options and potentially keep pace with Trent's attacking potential. But I still like Trent a lot and I'd go for him on the limitless chip. I think without this booster, you could definitely make a case for going for another Liverpool defender who's even cheaper and will get more ball recoveries than Trent Alexander-Arnold. But let's complete this defence now with a Man City defender 
in Gavardio with a fantastic fixture. Despite it being away from home, I still think C can keep a clean sheet. The news of Roger missing the entire season is massive and they will miss him in a lot of games. Gavardio could even be rotated. So no matter who you go for, whether it's a Kanji, Rika Lewis, Gavardio, maybe even Edison in goal, rotation is always going to be a problem with Man City. And that's why some people might just go for the Brazilian in goal and just keep it safe, so to speak, because there isn't as much rotation in that position compared to the defenders. But Gavardio should start the vast majority of games in the Champions League and Premier League. And he's probably my favourite considering how well he did with ball recoveries last season. It might surprise you to a certain extent to see no Arsenal defenders or goalkeeper covered in this podcast, but rest assured in future Use Your Fantasy Limitless and Wildcard Team videos, I will be covering them extensively because they offer great long-term value and their fixtures do get better than Paris Saint-Germain at home. I'm going to go for Kunde, who faces young boys in a home match, despite Stegen missing the entire season or at least a couple of months with an injury. There have been a lot of concerns and criticisms directed towards the German goalkeeper and they could actually be close, Barcelona, to signing Wojciech Szczesny, who actually retired during the summer, but he could be a great addition to the Barcelona defence and he could really make a lot of saves and help them win La Liga and go far in the Champions League. It has been a rocky start in this competition, losing 2-1 after going down to 10 men with Eric Garcia being sent off after a howler by Ter Stegen, you could argue. But in La Liga, they've been flawless, seven wins out of seven, and Hansi Flick has done very well considering it's his first time in Spain and at Bayern Munich, he worked wonders with the Bavarians. Not so much with the German national team, but that's to be expected. With Jules Kunde, you do have the ball recovery potential. He is one of the very best in this department alongside Schlotterbeck. You've got a nice balance with this defensive line. And like I said, if you wanted to double up on certain defences, I wouldn't mind Barcelona, but my personal favourite would either be Liverpool or Inter Milan. One of the stars of match day one was Florian Wirtz, who got 18 points and a brace in that 4-0 away win. And he is my favourite 7 point family midfielder at this moment in time. But you are blessed with this price point and position with the likes of Rafinha and Yamal being great contenders in match day two against young boys at home. Wirtz has the more difficult fixture on paper, with AC Milan having so much prestige and history in this competition. But I think Florian Wirtz and Bayer Leverkusen are by far the better team and they could easily score two or three goals in this fixture, perhaps even more. They do face Bayern Munich this weekend, so that could also be quite tough to navigate, facing one of their fiercest opponents in the league and then a relatively tough game in the Champions League just a few days after. But I think Xavi Alonso will get the hang of it and Leverkusen remain one of the strongest teams in Europe. Next up, I'm going for an Arsenal player here, but it is a very difficult fixture against PSG at home, but I'm going for Saka, who hasn't played 90 minutes very often this season. In fact, only the one occasion where he's done so. He was subbed off at halftime against Man City after Arsenal went down to 10 men. It was a tactical change, so to speak. He then started against Bolton in the Carabao Cup just a few days later, but Saka is so consistent with goal contributions, and in the Champions League last season, he was very consistent. He actually got one goal and one assist in all three home games in the Champions League group stages, so he had a great campaign considering that's his first time in the Champions League and he could easily build upon those numbers and lead Arsenal to a very decent finish in this competition once again. So I think Saka is a very good option here. At 9 million, that is tremendous value for me. And the same goes for someone who costs 10 million, which is a steep price in this position and fantasy format. But Mohamed Salah could easily be worth 11 to 12 million and in FPL, he can sometimes even justify a 30 million price tag. I think Salah facing Bologna at home is a great option, but considering the form of Luis Diaz, you might want to double up on the Liverpool attack or go for the Colombian instead of Salah. That is certainly something else you could consider, but I don't see anybody better than Salah in the long term amongst the Liverpool ranks, and that includes Trent Alexander-Arnold at the back. Let's now complete this midfield with even better options, you could argue. Now, Jude Bellingham hasn't been great with the attacking contributions as he was towards the beginning of last season, but with the injury to Kylian Mbappe for three weeks, I think Bellingham could play more of an offensive role as the attacking midfielder or floating striker and get even more goals in this competition. Facing Lille away, that's a decent fixture for him. And you could also go for Vinicius Jr. up front possibly even a Real Madrid offensive double up and Bellingham makes the cut for me. And the same goes for one of the most promising wingers in world football in Lamine Yamal, who is in excellent form in La Liga 
and the Champions League where he scored in match day one despite the Catalans ending up losing that game. But I still like Yamal a lot. The same goes for Rafinha. Either one of them would be completely fine. And you might even want to argue that Yamal and Rafinha over someone like Saka could be the best play in terms of the fixtures. But there's a certain reason why I haven't gone for Rafinha because there is one striker up front who is going to offer great value. He's been in terrific form all season, scoring at will. He's actually one or two players to have scored more than five league goals so far this season alongside a certain Erling Haaland. Of course, I'm referring to none other than Robert Lewandowski one of the top scorers in Champions League history. His record in the last five seasons is tremendous. So in UCL Fantasy, he has been one of the best assets in this game for Bayern Munich and now Barcelona. He's had some rough patches with the Catalans, but in recent weeks, he has been in tremendous form, scoring week in, week out. He actually got the winning goal against Getafe in a 1-0 win the other day. And it doesn't seem like anybody can stop him at the moment. With that nine-point family and price tag and the low ownership, coupled with a great fixture in match day two. I think he's an excellent choice on the Limitless. On the wild card, it might be a little bit different because you've got Bayern Munich in match day three, his former club. That could be a very tricky test, but for match day two only, I don't see many better than Robert Lewandowski. Even for the captaincy, I'd highly consider him at the very least. But as I mentioned Erling Haaland before, of course he's going to make it into this team. He is in frightening form across all competitions. The Champions League actually was his first fumble, where against Inter Milan, he blanked and didn't do much in that particular game. But against Arsenal a couple of days later, one of the best defences in world football, he scored in the opening 10 minutes. Then he didn't really do anything, but just give him one chance and he's going to score. And with those fixtures for Man City in the league phase, he's probably going to be a firm contender for the golden boot and build an unassailable lead potentially. But you have a lot of competition amongst the forwards. Mbappe is injured, like I mentioned earlier. So he would have been in this team originally, but now we have to go in a different direction. And I'm going for Vinicius Jr. away to Lille. But you do have alternatives like Lautaro Martinez against Fernas Vesita at home. That would be one of many. Even Goy Chris or these cheaper forwards with a great fixture. But I'm going to stick with Vinicius Jr. who has been one of the most consistent in the Champions League over the last couple of seasons. When you couple goals and assists combined. Lille is also a good fixture for Real Madrid in my opinion. They could easily score two or three. So you can go for this Real Madrid offensive double up like I mentioned earlier. And I'm going to stick to it for now. Even Borussia Dortmund midfielders and attackers are certainly worth considering, like the 5 million midfielder Gittens, who got a brace in match day one. We have so many options in each position, to be quite honest with you, and it's going to be difficult. Harry Kane got 21 points in match day one, but he does face Aston Villa in match day two, which is a much tougher test than Dynamo Zagreb at home. So you could even go for Harry Kane over Vinicius Jr. That would be one of the 50-50 calls of this squad. Let me know down in the comment section below who you would go for. At the moment, I would lean towards Harry Kane if I had to pick one over the other and go for a more balanced 50-man squad overall, covering the top teams and assets in UCL Fantasy. With the 50-man squad almost locked in, let's discuss the captaincy and the substitution. So a lot of these players will play on the 1st of October and it won't be like match day one where we have three different days for the captaincy and we've got games on the Thursday. It will be Tuesday and Wednesday only on the 1st and 2nd of October. So on the 1st, it's very simple. Put all of these players in your starting 11 and for the captaincy, it would be tough, but I'd probably go for Erling Haaland or Robert Lewandowski. They will be my top two picks for the armband on the Tuesday. And then on the Wednesday, if you need to change the captaincy, I'd be looking at Salah, who would definitely be one of my favourite options there on this 2nd of October. If you go for Vinicius over Kane, he would be another great shout, but I'd probably go for Salah on the Wednesday there. And what you want to do is have some of your players on the 2nd of October on your bench, and that would include your goalkeeper, in this case Thibaut Courtois, and you start summer and all your 1st of October players in your starting eleven. Hopefully that's all clear. So just to kind of give you an example, you can put Bellingham, Harry Kane and Trent Alexander-Arnold on your bench. And as you can see, you could argue there's a bit of an imbalance between the Tuesday and the Wednesday, but no matter what you have in terms of more players on a certain day, if you had to pick one, it'd probably be on the Tuesday. You'd rather have more players featuring on that day, then you can sub out your low scoring ones for those yet to play on the Wednesday. If it was the other way around, that would be quite tricky and maybe a bit nerve wracking, so to speak. But I think it's always best to go for this sort of structure Ideally, eight players on the Tuesday, seven on the Wednesday. But at least if you can't get to that sort of balance, try to have more players on the Tuesday so you can make those substitutions manually and change the captaincy to your liking. 
Thank you very much for watching this video and listening to this podcast. If you enjoyed it or found it useful, then be sure to smash the like button and subscribe for new. Our aim is to get this to over 200 likes and to keep on pushing towards 35 subscribers and beyond. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram, DylanRCM, for the latest UCL Fantasy and FPL updates. Also join the Discord server, UCL Fantasy League, Draft Hound, as well as Spotify. Give a five-star review on my podcast. It goes a long way to spoil my channel. I wish you all the best of luck for match day two and the rest of the tournament. And I'll see you next time.